During the late 80s and 90s, the Lucchese crime family, although smaller number-wise in comparison to the other families, were a force to be reckoned with. In fact, the government ranked the family as one of the more lucrative, extremely organized, and aggressive families of the five. The street tax that the Lucchese's placed in the garment center, trash hauling, and air freight alone, tremendously affected taxpaying citizens throughout America. The family's influence centered mainly in New York, but reached as far as Long Island, Westchester County, New Jersey, and Florida. Let's not forget, back in the 70s, specifically December 11, 1978, a robbery took place at John F. Kennedy Airport, better known as the Lufthansa heist. That heist was masterminded and carried out by Lucchese Associates with Paul Ivario's crew. The Lucchese family was also a part of the infamous Concrete Club back in the 80s, where four out of the five families monopolized the concrete business in New York City. The family's bosses, Vico Musso and Gaspipe Casso, did manage to stay out of the spotlight, unlike Gambino boss John Gotti, who cabareted around New York City in handmade $2,000 suits, taunting the FBI to try to put him in prison, something they ultimately did. If you think about it, despite the Lucchese's plotting to take Gotti out, in reality, he was good for them to have around because he kept the government focused on him and the Gambino family. This didn't mean the Lucchese bosses didn't flaunt their wealth, particularly with their homes. Tony Ducks Corallo purchased a $900,000 home on Long Island. Vic Amuso's Howard Beach House included a batting cage for his son, and Gaspipe built a mansion in Mill Basin, Brooklyn. Ironically, John Gotti's Howard Beach home was more low-key than these other bosses, but Gotti was known to spend much of his time out of the house. With the Lucchese bosses free in notoriety, it gave them the opportunity to flourish in business. The family was arguably a wealthy one, earning approximately $300 million annually. Naturally, the bosses were rich, but what's more interesting is most members were millionaires themselves, with the rest of the family earning six-figure salaries. The Lucchese's were a criminal enterprise that managed to turn profits like no other family. The foundation of that enterprise was formed by its previous bosses, people with little or hardly any education, guys whose vocabulary included them, these, and those, managed to set up rackets that made them and the bosses that followed criminal millionaires. Pony Ducks Corallo was once described by Robert Kennedy as the worst kind of racketeer the country has produced, a phrase meaning the total opposite, that Corallo was the most sophisticated racketeer the country ever produced. That insult had zero effect on Tony Ducks, who referred to Kennedy as a snot-nosed fucking punk. What I found surprising is Tony Ducks expanded the Lucchese's money-making capabilities to an international level by developing and controlling gambling casinos in London, where he also supplied gambling junkets for high-roller Americans to travel overseas, all expenses paid for. The profits were enormous, but Tony Ducks was eventually banned from entering England. The past bosses and many members of the Lucchese family are former narcotics dealers. In 1941, Tony Ducks was found in possession of a load of narcotics and was arrested and convicted of narcotics violations. Carmine Tremonti was arrested for smuggling drugs that were involved with the French connection, and he made millions doing so. In 1977, both Vic and Gas were arrested for their involvement in a drug trafficking ring where the heroin was smuggled from Bangkok, Thailand. Maddie Madonna was convicted in 1976 for conspiracy to import and distribute heroin. Keep in mind, all of those mentioned had to take an oath agreeing not to deal drugs. And as bosses, they gave that same speech to newly inducted members. For instance, one of those new members would be James Gallion who during the early 90s took control of a crack enterprise and taxed any dealers not associated to him. According to the DEA, the crack ring was netting the Lucchese family 100000 per week. And with that kind of money, you could believe the thought of Shelf and Galleon was never even a consideration, which defines the hypocrisy of that life. I've spoken about bosses stepping down or ones who refuse to give up their title, such as Vic Amuso, who remains the official Lucchese boss to this day. And history has proven Vic's efforts to remain boss, even if only by title, and more crucially, his choices of acting bosses, have caused the greatest amount of destruction to the Lucchese family. If we look at Vic as a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, he did well for someone not college educated. And since the mob at one time ran New York, the Lucchese family was right in the thick of it. 
Nevertheless, even a CEO has to make decisions based on the good of his company. You don't need to possess a college degree to see the handwriting on the wall. For example, on February 25th, 1985, Tony Ducks was one of several bosses arrested and indicted in what would become known as the commission case, with charges that included narcotic trafficking, gambling, loan shocking, labor racketeering, and extortion of construction companies. Enough charges to make Tony Ducks realize he had big decisions to make. And although we have no idea exactly what his thoughts were, we know one thing by his selfless decision to step down as boss. He put the Lucchese family before himself. I believe if he was able to see into the future, he would have either remained boss or definitely chose other people to take over. Let me mention the Super Thanks icon, which can be found underneath this video for any viewers who'd like to show appreciation and support. And thank you. The former bosses of the Lucchese family left behind an extremely wealthy family. And although murders have always been woven into the fabric of the mob, and that times are inevitable, if you take a look back at all the murders committed during Vic and Gas's reign, most were avoidable and more importantly, uncalled for. Many people would agree the downfall of the Lucchese family took place during the leadership of Vic and Gas. You don't have to be a mathematical genius to figure out that dropping bodies all over the streets will make the government come crashing down on those responsible. That's not to say crimes other than murder are condoned or are turned a blind eye to, but nothing more puts a rev in the FBI's engines than a mob murder. When looking back at the Lucchese's money-making history, there are family who've come a long way, especially for uneducated street guys. As most of us know, with money naturally comes power. Nonetheless, not everyone knows how to handle power. Of course, they know how to spend money, but power is a different animal. Because if you abuse your power, you'll soon find yourself without it and your money as well. 